Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good morning, good evening, good afternoon to all my dear friends and students and whoever is taking this course. So this I do repeat, please bear with me, this is the 34th class or 34th lecture, each lecture being for often duration of half an hour for the project management one and I am sure you know my main name, so I won't repeat it. So, as, as we were discussing um, in the 33rd lecture, the earned value project concept and how the curves for the budgetary constraints, budgetary costs or the budgetary resources with respect to the planned one or the actual one, how they can be analyzed and how you can use the different concept of efficiencies to find out how your work was going on, I did discuss in quite a detail, so, like both talk, talking and trying to give you the analysis. because. Here the concepts of you trying to utilize the quantitative tools is less in scope because as you are able to analyze and try to utilize the different techniques which you have already learned, the AHP, the different type of financial uh, concepts, uh, 6 to 7 of them, the, the yield, the IRRs, then the decision tree, the expected value. So, those can be utilized along with this earned value project management concept and holistically they would definitely give you a very good idea that how the different techniques of project management can be utilized. So, continuing with that, so we will now discuss the earned value concept under the earned value um, um, project management concept. It is the value of the work performed expressed in terms of approved budget assigned to that work for an activity or work breakdown structure component. So, if you remember the concept of work breakdown structure, what we did mention and what we even though we did not go into detail about that, it is basically trying to break the overall project into small components or activities such that trying to combine the set of activities would give you the project, but it will be much easier if you are able to analyze the time duration, the expected value, the optimistic time, the pessimistic time, the most likely time, the variances and all these things for those levels of activities and jobs would give you a much better picture. So, this earned value is basically the authorized work that has been completed till time, certain time plus the authorized budget for such, such a completion of the work. So, you are trying to basically make a one to one comparison with respect to the time taken to finish some amount of work or the total work or some number of activities with respect to the overall cost for that particular set of activities or till, till a certain value of the project completion which is there. The earned value being measured must be related to the, the PV which is the, the concept which we just discussed in the last slide of the 33rd lecture. So, this is the baseline PMV baseline which, which we did discuss. So, this, this is the baseline um, over and above or below that value would give you an indication whether you are doing good or doing bad. And the value of EM, EV or the concept of EV measured cannot be greater than the authorized um, uh, value of PV such that you know that whatever the amount of money which you have with respect to the budgetary constraints would basically make sense such that you are able to analyze the overall concepts for the, the cost and the time schedules for the project or the set of activities. The term EV which is the earned value is often used to describe the percentage completion of the project, a, prog a progress measurement criteria should be established for each and every work breakdown structure which you are trying to utilize or component to measure how the work is progressing. So, as I mentioned, sorry for repeating that time and again, you are trying to basically analyze both on the macro, micro level as well as the macro level for each and every unit of the activity which basically accomplishes the overall project such that you are able to take a decision whether the that particular activity is actually using more resources, less resources, whether you are able to finish that particular activity before time, after time 
So, all these things can be considered in a very practical sense. Project managers monitor the EV value both incrementally that at each unit which is basically the marginal rates is important for you. So, why it is important because it helps us to determine the current status and cumulatively it also helps us to determine the long term performance trends of that particular project such that you can take both a short term view as well as a long term view based on which you can analyze the project. The actual value which is the third bullet point which we will discuss is the total cost actually incurred and recorded in accomplishing work performed for an activity to work breakdown structure component. So, what you are trying to do is that you are trying to make a balance with respect to the work performed for an active activity or the work breakdown structure component so that you can make a one to one analysis. It is the total cost incurred in accomplishing the work that the earned value has measured. So, you are trying to basically find out the total cost with respect to the earned value and how what is the earned value that means what is the value net worth with respect to the actual cost which you have incurred. The actual cost has to be has to correspond in definition to whether or whatever the budget was and whether the budget for the PV and that measured in the EV concept are matching or there is a dichotomy between that. So, one is you have a budget and another is the actual cost based on which you will try to analyze whether the actual cost is over the budget or below the budget. The AC will have no upper limit because that is the actual spending which you are trying to do and the actual cost which you are trying to incur. So, whatever is spent to achieve the earned value will be measured and based on the earned value and the, and the actual cost which you have incurred as I mentioned you will try to make the, the analysis for the project. The schedule variance. So, now the, the, the few bullet points which you are going to now analyze would basically give you the dispersion. So, if you remember we did mention dispersion time and again and we did discuss that variance would be considered as the measure of dispersion for the decision tree analysis and the utility and the other simple concept. And if you remember also and again I am repeating it for different type of small projects or decision trees or the complex projects whatever you had we first try to analyze the point of view of the problem from the expected value considering the utility uh, as given in the problem and if the utility changes you know how to calculate the expected value of the utility and the expected value of the decision. And if the expected values were same when then we went to, into trying to find out the dispersion or the variances. And also one thing I mentioned even though it may have been in one of the lectures when we are discussing the returns, I mentioned that if the returns are normal and then we rest issues the utility based on which you are trying to do your calculation are all quadratic in nature or vice versa. And in general all the returns which we consider are normal distribution and based on the fact that even though if, if uh, any other non excuse me any non normal distribution is true still it will be tr uh, if, uh, true that you can use safely use the central limit theorem concept and try to convert whatever the distribution is for the activities or for the group of activities into a normal case and try to do your problems accordingly. So, continuing with that um, uh, we will I, I analyze this concept of, of the different concepts of variance from the earned value uh, project management concept. So, it is equal to the earned value minus the planned value. So, if the earned value is more than the planned value or vice versa you can take a decision whether the work is going on as per the plan or whether there is deviations or dispersions. The earned value management concept schedule uh, or the variance which is basically in front of you considering is the SV which is the schedule variance concept is a useful matrix in that it can indicate a project falling behind its baseline schedule or whether it is basically going ahead as per the baseline schedule such that you can take a stock of the situation at any point of time. The EVM schedule variance will ultimately equal 0 that means the overall variance would basically should be should 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 be actually 0 once the actual project is work over which means that the project is completed because all the planned values will have been carried out and the work had been finished. So, what you are trying to now analyze is three things. What you want to achieve, whether you have been able to achieve 
So, if you have been able to achieve with respect to what you want to achieve at the end of the day, the overall uh, the scheduled variance is 0. But having said that, there would be two other important concepts conceptually which should be important is that whether the cost to achieve that is more than the budgetary one. If it is, then there is a, a matter of concern. Point number 2 is that if it is less, obviously it is not a matter of a concern, but you have to analyze the problems accordingly. Another thing is that rather than going into the resource cons concept and the total cons concept or the, or the micro level cost of each and every schedule, you would also try to find out that whether the time utilization has been as per the planned concept. So, if the time utilization is as per the planned concept, then obviously you will be able to say that yes, look, the budgetary constraints have been met, we have not overshooted our, our schedule in utilization of the resources, we have not also overshooted our time utilization, utilization as per the norm, hence the project can be deemed proper from the point of view of all the different type of ratios which is which we are now discussing. But even if the schedule variance is, is 0 at the end of the, of the project, because it mentions that once it is, is complete, the schedule variance is 0, still we will try to find out if the cost is high, time is fine, then obviously there is some problem from the cost perspective. If the cost is as per the norm and the time is high, then also we will try to analyze the problem from the time perspective. And if both of them are a problem, which is the fourth different uh, issue which, which, which can come out then obviously a very hard look decision has to be taken that see the cost has also increased, the time has also increased. So, we need to find out whether at all the project was feasible from the point of view based on which it was actually early taken up, earlier taken up. The EVM and the, and the schedule variance are best used in conjunction with the critical path methodology which is the CPM. So, even though uh, I have not considered the CPM problem as such, remember the way of how you tackle the CPM problem is exactly as per the concept what, which you did for the, the PERT method. But only in the PERT method, the initial set of calculations which are there in the PERT method would not be there in the critical part method, because in the PERT method we had the non-deterministic time, the variances, the optimistic time, the pessimistic time, the most likely time based on which you found out the expected time and proceeded accordingly. So, uh, as I was continuing, the EVM and the, the SV, which is the schedule variance, are best used in conjunction with the critical path methodology, uh, CPM um, critical path methodology concept and risk management using the difference between the EV and the PV values, which we already know what they are. Now, come to the cost variance concept. It is a measure of the cost performance of a project, whether you are exceeding the cost or you are below the cost. It is equal to the earned value minus the actual cost. So, you will try to find out the differences. If the differences are positive or negative, you will take a decision accordingly, whether the cost variance is high or low or definitely within control. So, again variance being high or variance being low would have two different concepts from the point of view of a, of a, a person who is either risky risk taker or a risk lover or risk hater or a neutral person, but we will always try to analyze the problem that if we I, if I exceed the budget or I am below the budget, obviously the overall consequences are different. To what level or what quantum the consequences are different, that would only depend on what type of person I am, but I will definitely try to analyze the problem. A any poor person does that on a very qualitative and a logical sense he, for him or her. In a, any overshooting of the time, undershooting of the time, overshooting the budget, undershooting of the budget, all these things would have two different consequences uh, and obviously not of the same quantum. It is equal to the earned value minus the actual, val actual cost as I mentioned. The cost variance at the end of the project will be difference between the budget at completion and the actual amount spent. So, what was the budget and what is the actual amount spent? The, the cost variance is particularly critical, which now I am reading third point. The, uh, the cost variance is particularly critical because it indicates the relationship of physical performance to the cost spent. So, what I will try to see is that what proportion of the job has been finished, what, finished, what proportion of the 
project has been finished, what is the number of days it has utilized, what is the total number of resources it has utilized and if required we will try to basically analyze each and every resource allocation separately such that we can concentrate on any resources which are problematic. Any negative um, cost variance is often non-recoverable to the project and it is calculated using the following equation which is the difference between EV and AC. The variances concept which I just discussed now which is the cost variance and SV which we I did in the last uh, um, slide, they can be converted to efficiency indicators as I did mention when we started out discussing this different type of ratios. They reflect the cost and the scheduled performance of any project for comparison against all other projects. So, you can use the expected value, you can use the variance. So, these variances and these concept of expected value from the point of view of earned value concept from the, ma from the project management concept of point of view can also be utilized to compare the projects. So, for comparison against all projects or within a portfolio of projects which are there in front of you. The variances and indices are often useful for determining project status and providing a basis for estimating project cost and schedule outcome based on which you can take a very practical and holistic decision. The next point we will discuss about the variance is the schedule performance index. So, the word index means it is a ratio and ratio is basically some sort of efficiency as I mentioned as we were doing uh, the last session and as we continue doing this session which is the 34th one. So, SPI is the measure of progress achieved compared to the progress planned on a project. It is sometimes used in conjunction with the cost performance and index which is the CPI. So, what is the cost performance index? We will come to that. So, one is the, the um, uh, scheduled performance index and one is the cost performance index. Now, very simply scheduled performance index and cost performance index would be considered from the point of view of number of days or number schedule and the course perspective. So, what we are trying to do, we are trying to analyze both the important matrix, matrix. Matrix is not the matrix of the general unit, you have the matrix is basically in the measure we are trying to utilize both from the time as well as the cost perspective. So, uh, an SPI value less than 1 indicates less work was completed than it was planned, while if the value is greater than 1, then it indicates that the more cost was completed than was planned, based on which we can take a decision. So, doing more work obviously does not mean that we are doing much more than the efficiency. It may be possible some of those works were redundant or the, or the cost overturn was high or the delay in the project was such that it gives you a negative impact of the overall project. Since SPA measures all project work, the performance on, on the critical path must also be analyzed to determine whether the project will finish ahead or behind its planned finish date. So, when you are trying to analyze the SPI, any overshooting, undershooting from the point of view of cost, please bear with me, I am repeating these thing, things time and again, but they have a huge implication when we try to utilize the problems, the quantitative techniques and try to put them in the qualitative framework. So, the SPI is equal to the ratio of, of EV by PV. So, it can be either 1, it can be more than 1 and based on that as I mentioned you can take a decision accordingly. So, what for, for one of the projects say for example, the value is coming out to be 0 0.8 and for other the value can come out to be 0 0.9. So, if all the other constraints, other, other budgetary implications are fixed, then obviously it would mean the value of 0.8 and 0 0.9 would have two different consequences for the overall project which you are trying to tackle. So, this uh, slide basically considered one of the important uh, so called dispersion concepts based on the fact that the efficiency was very important to calculate for any project and uh, the discussion which we had in the last 2 or 3 minutes was basically the scheduled performance index or the SPI. Now, I, I, I will go to the CPI concept. So, the cost performance index concept, it is basically a measure of the value of the work completed com compared to its actual cost of progress based on the pro project or the set of activities. 
So, you are basically trying to compare the actual cost or the progress made, made with respect to whatever was planned in, in a certain sense. It is considered the most critical of the, of the earned value pro management concept or project management concept matrix which we had uh, discussed till now and it measures the cost efficiency of the work completed because at the end of the day obviously time scheduling is important from the PERT and CPM concept uh, respectively. But what is important is that whether you have been able to utilize the resources to the maximum possible extent and what were the cost implication for each and every unit used of the, of the resources. A, CP, a CPI value less than 1 indicates cost overrun for work completed while a CPI value greater than 1 indicates a cost underrun of the cost corresponding to the performance till date. So, what we are trying to analyze for all these ratios, it can be you try to analyze these ratios or these efficiencies or this expected value at the end of the project, but best would be if you try to analyze different type of activities at certain point of time and train take a decision whether you need to hasten up the particular activity or try to slow down the particular activity where you need to basically remove some resources from one activity to the other or try to hide the resources from the vendor or try to basically put more resources in, in, into that activity in your order to basically plan your overall project as per the norm. The CPI is equal to the ratio of EV to the AC and it is calculated using the, uh, the ratio which is EV divided by AC. So, uh, when whenever you have a project what you actually want to do is that you try to analyze the problems from the point of view of the ratios, ratio, these ratios which we discussed even though they have an implication from the financial point of view, but they also consider the cost as well as the time perspective. So, the cost perspective or the volume of work completion perspective would be basically different ways of trying to handle the same issue at different point of view or different perspectives such that you get a much better view how your overall work for the overall project is going on. So, in this uh, chart even though it is a repetition to what we did as we were as we did the different type of so called earned value project management concept in, in, in bullet points in one of the slides in the last session, but still I will basically I request my, my students to have some patience and go through the discussion once again because if you remember I did mention as we, we were as we were doing the, the 33rd, 34th lecture and also as we completed the 32nd lecture that the U implication of the utilization of the different type of quantitative techniques along with the qualitative techniques would give you a much better hold on project management as a subject. So, now in, in, the, uh, the, in the slide which we discussed where the chart was given, we had time along the x axis, it is also time along the x axis in this chart which is fine. In that uh, earlier chart or the table, the percentage volume completion was given along the y axis, here we are considering the cumulative value. So, what you analyze for the problem whether it is cumulative value, whether it is basically marginal rates, whether it is total time taken or the, the the incremental time taken after each and every say for example, 3 or 4 days completion of the job, those would basically give you different picture of trying to analyze the frame same problem from different viewpoints. But the overall implication whether it is positive or negative would basically come out from different perspective, but is basically trying to be certain or make yourself certain to the, the highest level that the decision you are going to take in order to basically channelize some resources from one activity to the other or trying to basically utilize the, the resources of the vendor or trying to reduce the utilization of the resources for the particular activity would make sense if you are trying to analyze the problem from different point of view. So, what you have is the, the bullet line which is the plan value which is the PV value. And here at the, the end, the, the dot which you have is the budget um, completion, that means when you finish of the overall work. 
and the other two uh, values which you have I will again try to highlight that using. So, one is the earned value which is EV, one is the actual cost which is AC. Now, what you actually do is that at any point of time let me analyze or try to give you a quality field. At any point of time you try to find out that what are the values of the actual cost, what is the value of the plan uh, uh, cost of the, of the project and what is the earned value of the project. So, what you do is that you find out these differences this can be for the activity it can be for a whole project also. So, consider this is delta x this is delta y use these values of delta x and delta y to find out the ratios and once the ratios are find out you will be able to at least use the expected value concept or the dispersion concepts. The concept means the different bullet points which I mentioned in such a way that it gives you a better picture of how the project is going on. Now, before um, uh, wrapping up this, uh, this session which is the 34th session, I will try to give you some feel that how the project can be terminated, what are the important points one should remember. So, the, for the project termination, you, uh, the project can be terminated, obviously it mean, mean that you have completed the project, but there can be other implications also. One can be misidentifying systemic errors, so there were some errors in trying to finish the project or the project was going out of end or the overall social implication of the project or overall budgetary constraints were being not met or whether the cost have be implication is very high or technology change has been very high such that you need to basically terminate the project whether uh, immediately or say for example, 3 months down down the line or whether once the 50 percent of the project is over. So, that would depend how things are going on. It can be misapplying or misinterpreting appropriate lessons based on events. So, we were trying to basically analyze the problem say for example, from project 1 and trying to utilize the concept of project 1 into project 2. So, it may be possible that I am trying to come up with some consider this some sort of herbal tea in South India, South of India. But uh, if you analyze the problem from the actual uh, realistic point of view, it may be possible that herbal tea or tea as such is not at all liked in South India because people prefer more coffee there. So, obviously, you would have uh, uh, trying to analyze the problem from the point of view of, of such a project would basically mean the actual assumption based on which I am trying to analyze or trying to implement the project may be actually wrong. It may be that failing to pass along the lessons learned and, and the conclusion learned from other uh, projects into this project would definitely mean that I have been able to misjudge that and trying to find utilize the concept, the consequences or the marketing concept or the actual implementation concept is actually very low such that it may not be actually possible for me to implement that. So, I will give you a, a simple example, an actual one that uh, along the concept of the, of the in government of India, many of the buses, low lying buses, AC buses were implemented in many parts of India. But somehow the course, overall cost implication of these or the utilization of, of the passengers in trying to utilize those high ended uh, transport system never picked up. So, even if the government did analyze the problem from a very um, uh, social, uh, from the social perspective from the point of view of trying to give the maximum benefit to the customer was was almost the highest from the government point of view, but many of the buses did not ply. So, if I consider that as a project it would mean the actual implementation may have been very good they are trying to buy the best buses trying to run them using the best possible resources would were, were very high or very good. But the end of the day, but the actual implication of the user of the customers was almost 0, hence those overall project failed. Project termination or the conclusion of project involves a tremendous amount of paperwork needed to doc document and record the progress and how it is going to end. You basically close out resources accounts, try to basically have a look at the financial structure, try to see that how the resources have been utilized, try to distribute the amount of money at different ends. When necessary track uh, the track the contractual agreement take take actions against it whether any legal or non-legal 
and the completed legal terms and conditions should be done in such a way that there is no such legal or financial issues involved. Some of the more important elements in the phase should be considered in such a way that they give you the actual picture that how the project should be finished. So, with this I will end the 34th lecture and in the 35th lecture half of that I will try to wrap up the concept of the how you close the project and then start with few examples. If I, I, I did mention about that how the CPM problems can be done, but I will try to analyze a problem in its very simplistic sense and then in the 30, if I again on the 35th, 36, 37, 38, 39th and the 40th lecture. I will give all my candidates or the student a good feel about what is JERT, QJERT and try to for solve problems accordingly for that. Thank you very much for your attention and have a nice day.